So I'm using the Blue Yeti microphone, but remember this tutorial is for any USB device. I have uh, added a pop filter. You're going to be popping and distorting the sound if you don't have one of these and if you're close to the microphone. If we take a look at the back of the Yeti here, you're going to see a pattern uh, dial here and this is so you can choose what direction the microphone is uh, getting sound from. We also have the microphone gain back here. On the bottom you will find the standard microphone threading so that you can mount this on a microphone stand which is what I have done. Uh, you could also get a table stand if you're planning on recording from a tabletop. We have a headphone jack. Now this is on the Yeti. Your microphone might not have one, but I will show you how to set, set up on GarageBand uh, the output for your built-in device, which is your laptop. It has an onboard mute button and a volume for the headphones that go straight into the microphone. Now if you are recording to a laptop, I do recommend you plugging in that uh, power port so that you don't run out of battery. You're definitely going to want to get yourself a pair of headphones. Uh, they don't have to be like this, they can be just uh, Apple headphones. A great tip for beginners is always have a microphone test. These are going to come in handy for that microphone test. If you're in a big party, I suggest getting yourself one of these. Now this is a headphone splitter. I got this from Best Buy a few years ago. This has four connections so f you and three other people could monitor the audio if you had to on headphones. So these are just a couple of extra things that you want to have on you for the recording session. Now let's get started. After you've plugged in your microphone, head over to System Preferences. You're going to click on Sound, and your input might automatically pick up that you're recording from a uh, device. So here it says that my Yeti stereo microphone is the selected input. Um, if it has built in in type, that is definitely not the one you want to pick. That is the onboard microphone and it's really bad and you don't want to make the mistake of recording from there. Now a test, a mic test would um, solve that issue if you were to accidentally choose the internal microphone. You would be able to tell that your microphone's not picking up sound from the connected device. So we're going to click on the Yeti stereo microphone and you would see your microphone listed here um, if it had a headphone jack but if it didn't then just click the internal speakers and if you plug it if you have headphones like I told you just plug those in because we're about to start recording and you do always want to start with a microphone test just to check that everything is correctly plugged in um, GarageBand mine opens up to a project but we're going to go to file new and we're going to click on voice. Now a whole bunch of presets are gonna show up and they each have effects and compressors on there. What we're gonna do is delete all of them. You're gonna clear them out until there's nothing there and it asks you what audio would you like to start recording. Uh, you're going to click the microphone obviously because we're recording vocals and you're going to head over to Preferences. Uh, you're going to go to Preferences Audio MIDI and your output device should be the same as the one that you have in your settings. I'm going to pull it up just so you can see. And the input is going to be the Yeti stereo microphone. Also the same as the input that we've set on this Mac. If we want, we could technically start recording now, but like I said, we want to do a microphone test. So let's do one here really quick. And for the purposes of this, I will not be wearing headphones so that I experience the sound off the laptop with you. 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And let's play it back. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What you don't want is you don't want distortion. So you don't want your audio to sound like when you're at a concert and you start recording with your cell phone. You don't want that distorted, crackling audio. Uh, so make sure that the gain on your microphone is around halfway and the gain on your computer is around halfway because that's going to give you a pretty good bass line. And as you can see, the distance that I am from the microphone right now, the audio input is going about halfway on this little chart here. And the closer I get, the more that you see the gain there. Pick a comfortable recording level. Uh, if you're gonna be podcasting, make sure that if you have a loud person, that they are aware of their sound level. If you're confused and you don't see a time code, that's because this little metronome and note symbol up here is measuring beats per minute and other musical uh, measurements. Yeah, beats and project information. So we're gonna click time, and that's where you're gonna start seeing, okay, we're on 30 seconds right now. And you know that, that allows you to monitor your audio. You can zoom out of this so you can see the track um, with more time on it, or you can zoom in. Now, these are the basics to recording with a USB microphone. Let's say we're done with it, right? We're done. I don't wanna do anything else to it. We're gonna go to share. We're going to export song to disc. Pick a place, you know, put, pick the desktop and name it whatever you'd like. Untitled audio. You're gonna see options down here. An AIFF is uh, uncompressed, so you can actually drag this audio into another program and it's gonna be uncompressed, very clear and crisp. If you take it down to MP3, you are going to lose audio quality, and even here you can pick uh, the bit rate. Double A C also is an Apple specific codec. Uh, you can save it in that, whichever one you'd like, as long as you know what you're saving for. MP3 is good for small file size, but bad for keeping uh, your original crisp audio. And AIFF is gonna be pretty, pretty large. Here's another tip that will add versatility to your kit. Now, the Yeti came with probably, I don't know, a six foot USB, but I went ahead and purchased this online uh, soon after. It's a 10 foot cable. And uh, you can buy, you know, cords in different sizes, but really consider getting yourself a longer cable so that you don't always have to uh, rely on the distance of the stock cables which could be anywhere from three feet to six feet and you're very limited if you only have a three-foot cable